Jacob, are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, Drew. But wouldn't Moriarty disappear out of the holodeck? I think the only thing holographic is your brain. No, you fool, we're going to review an animated uh, movie on this here podcast. Brilliant! No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Why would anybody want to listen to geek, two geeks like us? Because, you fool, these people have uh, are so very easily entertained. Okay, Drew. Nerf! Hello and welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. Joining me today is a man who was warned to touch nothing but the lamp. Jacob. Well, I do have severe ADHD, so sometimes it's very hard for not be just to, you know, mm-hmm. you know, get excited about everything. <laughs> Why, thank you. I'd like to introduce our co-host, a man who's just avoiding trying to get eaten by Raja. Welcome, Drew. Well, you just don't want to be that close to Frank Welker when he's not in a good mood. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And you have to avoid him three different ways as in this that, particular that is movie. True. So, that is true. Uh, so, yeah. So, Jacob, how are you doing today? Man, I'm actually doing pretty good. I'm actually on vacation Lucky. Uh, the time of this recording. Of course, I was on vacation last week, so. Uh, well, this morning I actually got in a good five-mile walk. Uh, we got some breakfast, picked mm-hmm. a few things up, finished out of you know, what I said earlier, a, a five-to-six-mile walk, and... Yeah, it was a thoroughly enjoyable day. Uh, I definitely need to get up off the couch a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it's uh, I've enjoyed sleeping in, mm-hmm. which is fun in a way. And then it's more like, okay, what do I need to do? And I look around my apartment. So yeah, I've got a ton of things I need to do. <laughs> and yeah. I'm working yes, on. Yes, you do. But uh, other than that, it's uh, going pretty good. Trying to work on some projects. Um, yeah, good. How about you? Oh, it's been good. Uh, work. I've been, you know, working the past couple days, uh, trying to get stuff sorted up there, to figure out what actually is going on. Yeah, but you know how that sort of thing goes. Oh yeah. And uh, currently, not that any of you can see this on our live stream at the moment, mm-hmm. I have been rearranging furniture. Yeah. So hopefully, within the next couple weeks, you'll be able to at least see something besides. The air conditioner thermostat. Uh, right. <laughs> that we never can get stitched to hide correctly. No. So, um, yeah. Eh. Uh, so what have you been watching, if anything? A lot, actually. Uh, I've watched, uh, what was it, She-Ra, Princess of Power. I mean, like, for some reason. The original or the no, new one? Princess of Power. Princesses of Power. The new one. The new one. The Netflix on, one. On okay. Netflix one. Uh, I found myself be like, I was like, okay, I haven't watched this in a while. So be like, why not watch it? And uh, I wound up binging, been watching it until season three. <laughs> I was like, okay, this story got really good. Be mm-hmm. like, the story's really good. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of waiting to, for them to go to another world and a certain somebody else show up. <laughs> It could happen. It could possibly happen. They're, I think they're currently in season five right now, I think. Uh, I've not kept up with it. All I know is in the commercial I saw when I was getting on Netflix the other day, mm-hmm. uh, one of the characters who in season one was a had a little bit of baby fat on her still yeah. looked like she'd grown up a bit. Yeah, that has to see if happening. So, yeah, I, I noticed that too, yeah. Yeah, so something's yeah. going on. Yeah. At, at least... Time is passing. Yeah, characters are growing. Unlike up. the original show, right? Nothing, nothing against you know, the original show. No, Raven. no, because that that show was so was a phenom- lot cheaper ph- animation then. Right, exactly. Or um, you couldn't do as much with the money. No, you could. I honestly don't know adjusted for inflation where either one lies. But. Right. Uh, I also watched uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Good choice. Yeah, I started going through that again. Uh, you know, kind of arcing back to my childhood, uh, mm-hmm. being children in the nineties. Uh, that was definitely a fun callback. Be like, obviously, because with uh, most Disney uh, afternoon cartoon shows, really didn't have pilots. Mm-hmm. Except, I think Darkwing Duck did. I think no, it didn't. No, it didn't. Darkwing Duck because, like, for most of those shows, but they don't get to kind of like an origin story until like season two. Or, well, I don't know. There's a couple of ones I watch. I, I don't think Darkwing Duck... Darkwing Duck's one of those where his or, he has five different origin stories. Right. 
but uh, I know another show I haven't not that I've watched it recently. Well, technically not or technically not origin show, but you know where what would the, be the first yes story chronologically yeah, chronology yes yeah um, like with Chippendale I think it's Chippendale Rescue Rangers let me you know yes, emphasize not the, that not the one with Chris Farley <laughs> no and and not just them you know chip you know chippering away like when yes. they're you know non not, Rescue not, Rangers not the old style. Uh, he loves silly, the silly bug, the snot shorts. out of Pluty, a Pluto. Pluty, 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 yeah. Pluty, Pluto. Whoever. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I watched that. I watched. Um, what was I watching? I had uh, someone I've known for many, many years. He was a youth I worked with, and uh, now he works. I think he works in Dallas now. Mm-hmm. And so he had mentioned that be like this. This certain show was on Netflix, and it's, uh, Car Captor Sakura. Oh yeah, it was on Netflix. And it's like oh, okay, I'll give it a shot because I remember liking the uh, the uh, the first English dub of it. Right, the second English dub was done a little bit cheaper. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> so I I, I uh, well this afternoon actually before I came over here, mm-hmm. um, I got on Netflix and it was like okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch this, and I couldn't get past the characters' voices. <laughs> I I just couldn't because for me the it's, the the voices of these yeah. characters go back to the original dub and like and ninety nine yeah ninety eight one of those and so what I did I literally went to YouTube found it on YouTube and watched it there. <laughs> Here's the problem with your thought there. What's that? A they edited that original show. Oh, absolutely. All. Get out! Yeah, it's it's and very it apparent. Does not match up with the card captor Sakura clear card season that started up a couple years ago, right? Because it doesn't even get to the seasons in no. between, and you anyway. I, I guess I'll just up the you know green bear. You prefer card captors to card captor Sakura. Exactly. It's it's a, it the, does the, have a good theme song. I'll give you yeah, that. Agreed. Uh, most heavily is a, a better than theme. the Japanese one in my opinion. Yeah, it's but. it's the the show because originally when they were doing when they brought it over to the states, be like they they wanted to bring it to more like you know a boys audience. Yes. And so they they well it, they aired it on Toonami. So yeah, they were expecting guys to watch. That's it. That's right. It was. I thought I kept thinking it was like WB. Like it may have, been, WB it or may have aired there too, but I remember it on Cartoon Network. Right. Probably right after the, another strange addition to Toonami, and one far stranger, Hamtaro. I remember something about that. Anyway. Yeah. Either way, so I, I wanted watching that. Um, I know we, uh, the two of us, went and watched over at a friend's house. We watched a little bit of some. What was that? What was that show that we watched? Do you remember? Oh, good night. Um, yeah. Oh, it's our. It's got a weird name. Yeah, it has a very. Uh, I was, let me rephrase. It's not that it's a weird name. It's got a Japanese name. Yeah, it's that I can't pronounce, and it was something like mono washery something. I something don't know. like I, that. I'm hesitant to actually say it right. because I'm fairly certain I'll get it wrong. Yeah. So if but it was um, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So if our friend Chase would get down in the chat and you know just uh, let, if he's let even us, in the chat if, if if he gets around to it, I could look it up, but I'm also lazy. Yeah. Aren't we all? Mm-hmm. <laughs> But either way, uh, I've had my fair share of watching watching TV, and uh, I'm might I'm hoping to get around to actually watching Titanic for the first time. Okay, yeah. Uh, obviously, when the movie came out in 1997, mm-hmm. I believe came out in 97, I was like an early teenager. Mm-hmm. So be like, oh yeah, all the girls were wooing over this. Be like, oh, it's Leonardo DiCaprio, and it's like, it's like I don't want to go watch this because I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm, I'm a jealous teenage boy. You're dude. jealous of Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Well, I was a teenager. What do you expect? <laughs> I didn't care. <laughs> so, I'd be mean, like, it was It was more, like, I never got around to watching it. And I, I was in fifth grade. So. Right. I was in, like, seventh. Seventh, eighth. But, um, and so, I, my, had a, I had an opportunity in 2001, like, on my first date, actually, to go mm-hmm. to watch it. But I was like, nah, let's watch something like, I don't know, Pearl Harbor. Like another three-hour film. Uh, that is what I've been watching. And uh, so what have you been watching? Well, I after I got back from... Well, let me back up. So a couple... I was on vacation right. recently. And I'd gone up to visit my grandparents. Or grandma, grandmother. Mm-hmm. And we watched a couple Hallmark movies. Because my grandma and my mom love 
Hallmark movies. Like they do. I don't completely understand it, but I kind of let it go. But because I was in the room, I counted it towards that hundred movie thing. Yeah. <laughs> but then uh, before we came back, we watched two interesting movies that were on Disney Plus. Okay. Uh, one is The Black Hole. Okay, I keep hearing good things about that. That is a very dark movie for Disney. I think it's like the, Disney's first PG movie. Yeah, it's the eighties. Yeah, but it's still got it's it's got that weird Disney flavor to it that it's still kind of kid friendly. It's just about halfway through it, somebody has to drop the D bomb. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we also watched a movie called Blackbeard's Ghost. Okay, which is about a guy who. Staying in the town that you know Edward Teach Blackbeard yeah uh, was supposedly living in when he had was with his tenth wife mm. who was a witch who oh, cursed yeah. him oh okay and uh, through trial and error he or through as events occur he ends up being haunted by Blackbeard okay and it's interesting okay it's a, it's a, that was that was a fun one to watch I mean don't go into it expecting some something deep philosophical meaning it's just a fun movie right so yeah and i watched that and then when i got back uh literally the day i got back hbo max launched yeah and uh, i watched a couple things on there uh mainly uh i watched little shop of horrors for Mm -hmm. the first time okay which is like muppets dark it's yeah. not a Jim Henson production, but Frank Oz directed it. Right. And Yeah, you know who so wrote that? I know the music was Alan Menken. And And the original movie was Roger Corman, but then yeah. it was turned into a musical on broad on off Broadway, and then it was returned back into the musical I saw. Well, far as I understand, it was a, it was originally a Broadway by a Howard a Howard Ashman. Yeah. The guy who wrote all these amazing early songs for uh Disney. For, and then um, this movie, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll 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 get to that point right. at some point. But, but that was a, that was good. But uh, mostly, what I've been watching on there are old episodes of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Ah, those are funny. Yeah, yeah, they are very funny. But that's pretty much outside of the the anime Chase got us to watch. That's right. pretty much all I've really watched. Okay, uh, over the course of the past couple weeks. All right, excellent. That I'm at liberty to talk about. Yes, same here. <laughs> all right. So, in the news, there is a certain game franchise possibly coming to Disney Plus in the form of a TV show. Oh? Yeah. You, it might go, might be very warm to your heart. I have heard of this. Yes. But it is still rumor, which is why I have not jumped on this news. All right. And I am hesitant to get excited for it for yes. what I'm assuming are going to be obvious reasons. Yes. All right. So, apparently... Cinema Spot Insider last week mm-hmm. posted that uh, the game series Kingdom Hearts is reportedly being developed as a CG animated series for Disney Plus. I can understand that. What from what I hear, they're going to use uh, Unreal Engine three, yes. which is the same game engine they used for Kingdom Hearts three. Uh huh. Which, if they're using all the technology they used in Kingdom Hearts three, right. it will look good. Don't get me wrong. It'll look great. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am curious if they've gotten the rights back to Tarzan yet. Because Time will tell. Mm -hmm. Well, because the thing is, while Disney owns the rights to, like, distribute it and such, like, on video, they don't... They just recently got the rights to do it on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Because I just saw that it's coming in June, which I don't know if that's on your list. But it's coming in June. No, it's not on my list. Which makes me wonder, outside of the One World and Kingdom Hearts... Are they going to be able to bring it back for whatever this TV show is? Because that's what this is, has not explained, from my understanding. Yeah, we just know it's based in the universe. We don't know if it's retelling the games. Yeah, we don't know if it's a original story that's going to have an obnoxious name that no one's going to be able to understand until they've watched seventy five percent of it. <laughs> and have to watch it twice to understand it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't know what the. Let's face it; it will have an obnoxious name, no matter if it's a remake of the series or not. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if it were me, what I would love to see, though I don't think they would do this, is actually go ahead and redo everything with the same voice actors. Yeah. Because that is one of the things that will confuse you, or that will mess at least messes with me. Right. Through it is uh, between. The first two games and Kingdom Hearts 2, 
uh, Haley Joel Osment went through puberty. Right. So his voice gets deeper. Yeah. <laughs> Noticeably. Drops a few deeper. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, Aerith has like three different voice actresses. Well, they can just pick one. Lord Xehanort has th- has three, and two of them died. <laughs> I weep for. Uh, I'm I'm hoping uh, Christopher. Oh, what's his name? Walken. No, uh, Doc Brown. Oh, Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. I'm hoping that this is not a cursed role since he's. The current voice actor yeah, for, for no, the no, main no. villain of the show. I, I, I might riot. Be like, I might personally riot if Kingdom Hearts kills off Doc Brown. Well, I mean, it already killed off Spock. <laughs> okay, we are we are not saying that Kingdom Hearts is cursed in some reason. No, I'm actually... saying the role of Lord Xehanort is cursed. <laughs> it killed a man between his appearance in the game and the DLC. Okay, then. I don't think that's actually what happened. I no. think it's just coincidence, but I I throw it up there along with the Madden curse where the football player who's on the cover of the game has the worst year he's ever had. <laughs> or the Superman gets curse. injured. Yeah. I'm, I'm throwing it up there as like, this is an interesting coinky dink. Yeah. <laughs> so to your point of be like with uh, hiring actors, uh, apparently the three are the three current voice actors for Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Goofy Pluto, and Donald Duck are reprising their roles for this. That makes sense. They've been reprising those same roles for the past 30 years. Yeah, roughly 30 years. Because that's the thing I have. When you're talking about the Disney characters, yeah, unless there's some weird scheduling conflict, it's almost always the same actors. Right. I mean, obviously, Robin Williams didn't retire for the genie in the Aladdin level. Yeah. But it, but it's the same Jasmine and the same Jafar. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the same Aladdin. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. A little heads on that before yeah, we we'll, get to we'll, the actual we'll, thing. Yeah, we'll head into that anyway, a little bit later. All right, so... What's the rest of... What else we got? All right, so... Let's talk about a little blue, uh, a blue blur for a second here. <laughs> you know, with, uh, okay. with uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Because uh, obviously it's in production now. Yes, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog two. Yeah, so it's currently in production, which that be like to me is like I, I'm excited mm-hmm. to what they're gonna do because they did a phenomenal job with. I agree. Sonic the Hedgehog. I agree. And um, th- it's always the be like either it's gonna be either you have three you have three scenarios with uh mm-hmm. with a sequel, either A it's gonna surpass the first one, yeah. B it's gonna be, meh, or D it's gonna be a bomb. It's, it's just gonna drop like a hammer. No I one's noticed gonna... you skipped C. Okay. But I was gonna let it go. Okay. <laughs> just let it go, man. Let it go. Wrong movie. But anyway. Yeah, exactly. But uh yeah, so um they have what was funny though when I was when I was watching the news yeah. on this, they were talking about how Sonic the Hedgehog 2 got a sequel, but the obviously there's no video of the new movie, of course. Right. So they showed scenes, for, you know, and usually when this happens, they show B-roll footage from the pre- previous movie's trailer, right? Yeah. They did not choose stuff from the newer trailers. The B-roll C- oh. local CBS station used was the, the original, original trailer, trailer with the old Sonic. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. wow, wow I wow, thought wow, that there. was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they have uh, Oscar Nyman animator... Uh, Jeff Boulder uh, will turn his direct uh, script be, will be penned by uh, Pat Casey and Josh Miller. The project is currently in develop, so cast and production kickoff kickoff is to be announced. But the partners be like obviously it's partnering with uh, the the Sonic team or Team Sonic for this film, like they did in the last one. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, Sonic is two is underway, Good. and so I'm very excited about getting to know a little more about the the world of Sonic. Okay. Anybody else excited about this? I'm always excited for Sonic, even okay. when Sonic is bad. So okay. All right. So that's it in the news. All righty. So let's get into the spoiler-free section of our review for the movie Aladdin, 1992. I originally saw this movie after it had come out on home video. Mm-hmm. 
but my mom swears she's never seen it, so I don't know exactly how I saw it. Mm. Uh, or at least she, uh, after we got out of watching the new Aladdin, she swears she had never seen it. I know I watched it. I either watched it at a friend's house or maybe they showed it at school. I don't know. Yeah. But I know I watched it because I remember at least the plot. <laughs> okay. From more than just Kingdom Hearts. Uh <laughs> And I know I know most of the songs, right? Uh, except for the opening, that first song, dun, 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 uh, "Arabian dun, dun, Nights," dun. was on whatever viewings I watched. They came in at the peddler, okay. Which means I have never actually gotten to hear the original line that got edited in that song, right? <laughs> for those of you who don't know. In the original song, in, in the song, there's a line that says where it's hot and hey, hot and intense, and intense. It's barbaric, but hey, hey it's, it's home. home. In the original version, he says, "Where they cut off your ear, and if they don't like your face, it's barbaric." But, but hey, hey, it's, it's home. home. I have only heard about that in passing. Right. I have never actually got to hear the original version, and I kind of think i prefer the original version and the original version i think fits the rest of the movie yeah better because the rest of the movie does not shy away from this is arabia we do things different in arabia and some of it is not disney nice no it's not it, it, it definitely takes off this it uh it uses a lot of like a lot of like when i was a kid they would use different different words that i had mm -hmm. no idea what it meant now as an adult yeah. i do understand it um almost to the point it's like you know, I was surprised right the first time I watched uh, Hunchback. Yeah. And they actually did not shy away from Catholic imagery. Yeah. I'm going to specifically say Catholic because it is Christian, but there's a lot of focus on saints and, you I know, got you. Yeah. all that stuff. Right. And that just seemed like something Disney wouldn't do in the 90s. But then you go back to 1992. Yeah. <laughs> and you literally have the Sultan going, praise Allah. Uh, it's yeah. Like, Boy, you can tell this is about 10 years early because <laughs> i don't know how well this would have flown it's at like, least a couple of years right after 9 11 right but uh the the fact that it was cut uh interesting fact about that the uh like when it, when it was first screened when it was first mm -hmm. put out uh they had a lot of uh muslims who were very offended by that yeah i and can so, imagine and so they had to, so they had to go quickly and re I think it was like one of the screenings. It was yeah. really like they had a lot of people complaining about it. I, so they go back. You can kind of tell there's a there's some a feeling of some dropped scenes throughout the movie, but a, not, a little bit. Not, not or not dropped scenes. You can kind of feel almost a rush edit in parts, but yeah. not not too obvious. Okay. I don't know. If I can kind of sort of feel a rush okay. in some of the edits, even on this uh, remastered version that I watched on Disney Plus. Right. Um. So yeah, that's was my experience with it. I, I still like the movie. Uh, I'll get more into my thoughts when we get into the spoiler-filled section, but I will say I kind of wish this was a little bit longer okay. than an hour and a half, just to you know give some more oomph in some of the scenes. Okay. But that's just me wanting more pacing and more oh, time to breathe and really more genie. Of course. But yeah. So, uh, what are your thoughts on them on the movie? My thoughts, uh, well, if memory serves correct, I might be wrong on this, uh, but I do remember watching it in theaters mm -hmm. and just being like mind blown. It was like, oh my gosh, because it was it was kind of like a tradition that uh, back in the early nineties that we would go and watch uh, like the recent Disney movie with uh, my aunt and my cousin, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember watching it live in the theaters. It was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing! Just the 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 pure spectacle of how they like. The, how far it's, uh, CG had come. Mm -hmm. It's 1992. Um, this was a fantastic film, and I think the next year I went and watched the, um, hold on, The Lion King. I was yeah. uh, like, why did I just drop the ball on The Lion King? But either way, uh, I remember watching it in theaters and then watching it so many times on VHS mm -hmm. and then watching the sequel. So, right. right. But, uh, yeah, I I I have very fond memories of this movie. It's a wonderful movie. Obviously, uh, Robin Williams killed it. I just be like there. There's 
be like he be like he just ran the sh- like ran the gamut of everything in that movie, mm-hmm. and uh, I enjoyed it. It's got a good story, good plot, uh, good characters, good characters, um, very compelling story, and uh, I I enjoy the mess out of this movie. So in our on our chat on my uh, Facebook uh, watch party, which you can join either mine or Jacob's Facebook watch parties every Tuesday night when we record, if you want to join us. Right. Uh, in mine, uh, we, uh, we, we of course, asked the stream before everything started and a second ago if the, we ha- anyone had uh, any memories of the movie. Uh, on mine, I had Josh Adams reply, Never Had a Friend Like Me is one of my all-time favorite Disney songs. Da, 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 Which I can understand da. that. That's actually a very mm-hmm. good song. It is. It's a very good song. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, there, there are a lot of very memorable songs in this, mo- this movie. Oh, yes. A lot of them. I agree. <laughs> All right, so we've got that out of the way. Right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll move into our spoiler-filled section uh, of of our review of the movie Aladdin on the other side. The following is a spoiler-filled review for the movie Aladdin. Listener discretion is advised. Aladdin was written and directed by Ron Clements and John Musker, they both wrote and directed Moana, mm-hmm. Princess and the Frog, yep. and Hercules. You forgot one crucial one. What did I forget? The Little Mermaid. I didn't scroll down that far. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> and plus, you, you I like got my... one job to do that. Come on, man! <laughs> hey, in my mind, if I go farther than three, there's got to be a good reason. <laughs> and while Little Mermaid is a good reason, yes. I probably just looked at the best known for. It's like, oh, da, da, da. I don't know what that fourth one is because it wasn't Little Mermaid. I would have remembered that on there. Yeah. Uh, it was also written by Ted Elliott and Terry Ro- Rosio, mm-hmm. who wrote Shrek, The Lone Ranger, and Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Arr. Music was, of course, by Alan Menken, mm-hmm. who did Little Shop of Horrors, Tangled, Beauty and the Beast, and Howard Ashman did, was the same. Mm-hmm. With some of the lyrics being written by Tim Rice, who, of course, wrote the lyrics for The Lion King, Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. The movie is based on Aladdin and the Magic Lamp from 1001 Arabian Nights yes. by an un- by unknown authors. Yes. Because that is actually a collection of short stories uh-huh. or tales across a long period of time. Cast includes uh, Scott Weinger as Aladdin. He played the character of Steve Hale in Full House. That's right, he did. Robin Williams plays the genie and the peddler mm-hmm. at the beginning. Uh, he is, of course, Mork in Mork and Mindy. Yes. Daniel Hillard in Mrs. Doubtfire. And Peter Banning in Hook. Hello! Or Peter Pan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's Peter Pan. Yes. But that wasn't how it was credited. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Which I was like, IMDb, are you trying to not spoil people on a 20-year-old movie <laughs> for the first time ever I've ever been on this website? Yeah, just just to quote that very famous movie of Hook, Kill the Lawyer! <laughs> yeah, what's new? Uh, Linda Larkin plays Princess Jasmine. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did not have much outside of reprising the role of yes. Princess Jasmine. Uh, but the next thing it was listed on her known for was the character of Kelly in a movie called The Next Best Thing heard of that i hadn't so okay. you're better off than me jonathan freeman plays jafar oh. and uh do you remember when we were kids a show on pbs of all places called okay. shining time station no i don't well this was the american version of thomas the tank engine when it really? first aired over here yeah and in the american version they had a kind of mannequin not mannequin um you know, a puppet band, essentially. Okay. And one of the characters in there was named Tito Swing, who Jonathan Freeman voiced. Okay. So, interesting point. You mentioned Thomas the Train. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did notice one of my research doing for news. I just didn't put it in there. But apparently the voice of Thomas Train recently passed away. Oh, that's sad. Hmm. Uh, next on here, we have our good friend, who we've never met, but has been on more episodes than probably we have been. Frank Welker as Abu, the Cave of Wonders, and Raja. And the interest and with for those of you who have never listened to us before, with Frank Welker, I always try to find something 
We've not that, mentioned before. That's a lot. And <laughs> I'm actually surprised this has not come up, so it may have already come up before. Oh, okay. So fair warning. But in the movie, Transformers, Dark of the Moon, he played Shockwave. Yes, he did. Well, technically it was Soundwave. Then IMDb had it spelled wrong. Yeah, it's <laughs> Soundwave. We'll go with that. Oh, what was it? Hold on. I, I, I love Soundwave. I mm-hmm. love Soundwave. As a character. I always thought it was sad you couldn't actually play tapes on those. The original one, you could. The ori- the original, when it was in Japan, mm-hmm. the original one, you could. But it was over in the States, you couldn't. Of course not. That had been too much fun. No, of course not. Uh, of course, we've got Gilbert Rubbish. Gottfried as Iago. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> he is, of course, the Aflac duck. Quack. Was. <laughs> was, yeah. He's not anymore. And in the movie Problem Child, he played Mr. Peabody. Okay. <laughs> Brad Kane is Aladdin's singing voice, and he played uh, the voice, uh, Tom Thumb's singing voice, in The Adventures of Tom Thumb and Thumbelina. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, Leah Salonga was Jasmine's singing mm-hmm. voice. She was Mulan's singing voice uh-huh. in Mulan, and she has played Mrs. Kusakabe in My Neighbor Totoro. Oh, okay. The mother. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Hmm. Which I thought was an interesting... That, that, that is a very interesting... <laughs> yes. So, uh, what we got in... What are we calling this thing now? I think we've changed the name of this yeah, section about it, it's just, seven times. Let's just call it production. Production. Yes. Production what's, and cost. What's the jazz. production look like? All right. So, um... Uh, the movie has a 8.5 on IMDb. Mm-hmm. Rotten Tomatoes is a 95, which is not surprising at all. Mm-hmm. And for audience score, it has a 92. There again, be like, I don't get that. I'm just like, it's the, be like, most of the time your audience is higher than your critic score. Mm, sometimes, yeah, just, I'm, I'm not saying all the time, but I think sometimes what, it's different. I think what it's you're, very odd. Yeah, I think what you're dealing here with here is an average. Yeah. It could be that we are separated just enough from the original release of that movie yeah. that maybe people who are don't have the nostalgia going back and looking at the movie may True. be being affected in the audience scoring. Yeah. And maybe they're not, if, if they don't remember how things were or not good film studies, they may not realize how much we've come since then or before, up till that point and don't know how good and I'll admit, we'll get to it in a second, but I, I, that's just my thoughts. It's like, eh, you don't have the nostalgia, and you're not a... F- you, maybe that's affecting the score. I don't know. That could be a possibility. It's a guess. It's I don't guess. know. Yeah. Either way. Uh, it was produced by Walt Disney Pictures and Walt Disney Animation. It was go. distributed by Bonavi- Bonavista Pictures. Uh, it was released on November 25th, 1992. Box office wise, it had a budget of twenty eight million dollars estimated. Mm-hmm. Estim- it had a budget of that on its opening week. Wowzy boo wowzers! That's nuts. <laughs> All right, so it's open. I'd be like, be like, I just basically just cut and paste this time here. So, mm-hmm. so its opening weekend U.S. but uh, gross was one hundred and ninety eight million dollars point six million dollars okay it's u.s gross was 217.3 million dollars and to kick it up quite a few more notches it's worldwide gross was 504.0 million dollars hmm. this money this money this movie made bank it yeah. was like from its estimated budget of nearly thirty million dollars to getting a world worldwide gross over five hundred million dollars, that is nuts. Definitely for nineteen ninety two. That is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but hey, everybody went crazy over the genie. Well, it's Robin Williams. That is true. No matter what, you got to give him that. That he, he at that time he was in his prime. He was, but also a fun fact be like the the fact that. Like when it came to per like the uh, distributing of toys and all of this good stuff of you know because obviously the genie is the biggest character of them so you have mm-hmm. to give him toys and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, 
the when Robin Williams said be like uh when he signed on to do this be like hey I want to do something that my kids re- will get to watch and so he be like he did it on that which is like, okay be like be like my character because apparently they were paying him under under salary mm-hmm. for the uh like this the one of the one of the guilds I can't remember which but like they were they were paying him under but they were they were giving him so many rights to the film mm-hmm. but he one of his things was like okay but my character cannot be this much proportion on on uh, on posters or advertising he has to be much smaller and uh like no toys could be made of him but obviously you know on the prefaces of this movie coming out mm-hmm. it kind of just happened cuz you you look at the original posters the, the genie is larger than life. He's the largest character on the poster. Well, with the exception of the first poster where it's literally just the lamp. Yeah, that is and true. That, that is a good poster. I, I do love that poster. Yeah, I, I think I had a chance to get that when I was a kid, but I didn't. Hmm. I seriously regret doing that. Uh, but it's, oh my gosh, like the, the whole reason like in like in Return to Jafar, be like, that's the reason why Williams did not return because he was so mad. He mm-hmm. was so furious with Disney. And then it literally took until 2000, just right around 2000 that Katzenberg had left. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like literally the, the new uh, head, of the, head of the animation department literally went to wrote Williams with a original, what was it? Um, a, I can't remember. For some reason, the, the artist's name is uh, failing me. A Picasso. He had, he had an original Picasso and gave mm-hmm. it to Williams. And Williams was still too furious about it. But eventually they did make up and uh, be like made a public apology for what they did. Mm-hmm. They, you know, manned up. And it's like, hey, we made this error, you know, so many years ago, nearly, you know, you know, 10 years ago. So and then you that's the reason why you know, be like you have Robin Williams Returns in the third installment, the uh Direct the video, mm-hmm. uh, Aladdin and the Prince of what I can't remember the title of it, but it, it's Aladdin and the Prince of Thieves. Thank you. But yeah, that's that's the whole be like the whole that whole story behind it's very interesting. And there's a there's an interesting reason why the like why Rob Williams became the genie. Mm-hmm. A little movie called Fern Gully, which I hated. Yeah. I be mean, like I, I understand why you didn't like Fern Gully. I understand. I didn't um, even finish Fern Gully. Oh, really? You didn't finish it? <laughs> uh, what I remember was uh, was watching Fern Gully because it was the new animated thing. We just rented it from the local movie rental place there right. in Lindell. Mm-hmm. Put it in. I'm watching it. I think to some degree I recognized. Oh, even at that age, yeah, that this was an environmental story. Oh, yeah. But I was still kind of into it, still watching it. Yeah. And then the black ooze creature. Tim Curry. Oh, my gosh. Uh, showed yes. up. And apparently it scared me so much that I couldn't finish the movie. Okay, I got you. It's like, so for, Fern Gurley didn't do very well financially. It didn't. But as of now, it's more of, it's more of a cult, cult classic. We'll so, have to do it at some point. Yeah, we eventually do Fern Gurley. I think I I watched it uh, a couple of months ago. It was actually really good. I think I caught it somewhere. It's gonna where, but uh, the the fact that be like he had done Batty and I, I loved his performance as Batty because it's mm-hmm. just Robin Williams. But uh, the whole reason he the whole reason he got the role of the genie was because of his performance as Batty, even though the movie didn't do well. Be like, just because of that reason, mm-hmm. they're like, okay, this guy does have a good talent when it comes to voice work. So that's one of the reasons that I've seen that he was hired or he was given the offer to be Genie. Okay. And plus they designed a character after him. True. Yeah. Either way, that was, that's my little rant about Robin Williams and the, there, there are so many different little stories that we can go into just about this. It could be a three hour podcast, but we're not going to do that. Right. So, ready to get into the summary? Let's do this. All right. So, Jafar, the royal vizier of the fictional city of Agrabah, uh, and his parrot Iago seek a lamp hidden within the Cave of Wonders. They are told that only one person is worthy to enter, the diamond in the rough, 
whom Jafar later identifies as Aladdin, an Agrabah street urchin. Princess Jasmine of Agrabah, upset that the law requires her to marry a prince instead of one she loves, escapes the palace and meets Aladdin and his pet monkey, Abu. The palace guards capture Aladdin on Jafar's orders. Jasmine confronts Jafar to demand Aladdin's release, but he lies and says that Aladdin has been executed. Disguised as an old man, Jafar frees Aladdin and Abu and brings them to the cave, ordering them to retrieve the lamp. After being told to touch nothing but the lamp, Aladdin finds a magical carpet inside and obtains the lamp. Forgetting the cave's rule, let's face, face it, Abu did not forget the cave's rule. No. He got gold fever. Uh, he grabs a jewel, and uh, Aladdin, Abu, and the carpet rush to escape the cave as it collapses. Aladdin gives the lamp to Jafar, who throws both Aladdin and Abu back into the cave, though not before Abu seals the lamp back. Trapped, Aladdin rubs the lamp and meets the genie, who lives inside it. The genie grants Aladdin three wishes. Aladdin tricks the genie into freeing them all from the cave without using a wish. He uses the first wish to assume the identity of a prince to woo Jasmine and promises to use his third wish to free the genie from servitude. At Iago's suggestion, Jafar plots to become Sultan by marrying Jasmine. Aladdin, as Prince Ali Ababwa, arrives in Agrabah with a large host, but Jasmine becomes angry when he discusses her fate with her father, the Sultan, and Jafar without her. As a means of apologizing, Aladdin takes Jasmine on a ride on the magic carpet. A whole new world? Perhaps. When she deduces his true identity, he convinces her that he only dresses as a peasant to escape the distresses of royal life. After Aladdin brings Jasmine home, the palace guards capture Aladdin on Jafar's behest and throw him into the sea. The genie appears and saves him at the cost of his second wish. Aladdin returns to the palace and exposes Jafar's evil plot. Jafar flees after spotting the lamp and thus discovering Aladdin's true identity. Fearing that he will lose Jasmine if the truth is revealed, Aladdin breaks his promise and refuses to free the genie. Iago steals the lamp and Jafar becomes the genie's new master. He uses his first two wishes to become Sultan and the world's most powerful sorcerer. He then exposes Aladdin's identity and exiles him, Abu, and the carpet to a frozen wasteland. They escape and return to the palace. Jasmine tries to help Aladdin steal the lamp back, but Jafar notices and overpowers the heroes with his magic. Aladdin taunts Jafar for being less powerful than the genie, tricking Jafar into using his last wish to become an all-powerful genie himself. Now bound to his new lamp, Jafar ends up trapped inside it, taking Iago with him. After Agrabah returns to normal, the genie banishes Jafar's lamp and advises Aladdin to use his third wish to regain his royal title so the law will allow him to stay with Jasmine. Aladdin decides instead to keep his promise and freeze the genie. Realizing Aladdin and Jasmine's love, the Sultan changes the law to allow Jasmine to marry whom she wishes. The genie leaves to explore the world while Aladdin and Jasmine start their new life together. Sounds about right. Mm-hmm. So my first like, okay, is that this is a dark movie for it Disney. Is, it is. Uh, I know there is technically one that might be darker in uh, the Black Cauldron, which I've not seen. Yes, but this is still fairly dark for Disney, even that considering that. Uh, even when you consider in the very next movie they kill James Earl Jones. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, they do talk about beheading uh, and many other things. It's like, I'm surprised you're getting away with that in a rated G movie. <laughs> yeah, I'll have aim to kids. <laughs> yeah, I'll have your hand for I'll have your hand as a trophy street, street rat. Yes, it's I like that they were able to take that risk because mm -hmm. it while it doesn't really make the movie better it does at least add a sense of re realism right to it when well as much realism as you can get in this kind of movie it's just i enjoy that aspect of it that right. it's like yeah there's actual danger in the city it's not like a lot of these where it doesn't feel like there is any danger other than a uh, implication it's, it's that it's things all might not go well no exactly. this is your life is going to be bad if it's not peril. over if, if yeah. you don't do if, if uh Things don't go the way you want them to go. Exactly. So, yeah. That's my first like. Okay. My first like is coming out of the box swinging. It's Robin Williams' manic performance as mm -hmm. the genie. The the fact that it'd be like, uh, people have gone on record. There are 16 hours, 16 hours of 
material Robin Williams laid down. Be mm-hmm. like, be like. Now most of it they said be like they really can't uh, release. Yeah, release because how it's you know Robin, it's Williams, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. <laughs> like after after watching a, a, a performance of mm-hmm. one of his performances from two thousand two, I understand why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> But uh, just the oh my gosh the the amount of creativity and just the his creative mind was so just like on steroids going into this movie be like mm-hmm. like for how many impressions he does and like just the fact that he can go from just being zany and crazy and just wacky as can be to going down to a very tender moment of be like it's like uh, what was the moment where. Uh, like like you said in this synopsis of um, Jafar has uh, Aladdin thrown in the sea. Yeah, I mean, like you had that real tender moment. Now, be like later on, I do have a little problem with that scene, but um, but little little moments here and there, like at the very end, be like you always be a prince to me. Mm-hmm. That scene is so it's mm, so good. Yeah, and uh, like he absolutely kills it in this performance. That's why everybody just loves the genie. Mm-hmm. And uh, like when they go to when they went to the sequel, it'd be like, it's like, yeah, the guy who did it was the voice of Homer Simpson. But like, yeah, he did very well for what the material he was given. But you really can't be like you're going to, up to a bat against such a um, Power powerhouse. House. Thank you, powerhouse of Robin Williams, and that's kind of hard to uh, surpass. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's you know. Robin's performance is a genie. I'd I mean, be like, it's so good. So mm-hmm. good. What is your number two? Well, as much as I love Robin Williams' performance as the mm-hmm. genie, my number two is Jonathan Freeman's performance of Oh, Jafar. yes. Yes. I love me a good villain. Oh, yeah. And by good villain, I that can mean a couple different things. Right. Especially with a Disney villain. Mm-hmm. Jafar is not Scar, who is just apathetic. And has a lot of machinations going. Right. He's not Ursula, who is conniving and everything. This is the literal mustache twirling yes. villain. <laughs> in the four, and that's kind of why I like him. Yes. He literally wants to take over the kingdom. That's it. He doesn't feel he's better. he'd be better at doing it. No, he just wants control of the kingdom. That's all. That's all it is. And he's even nice enough to his little parrot that when he does become Sultan, he gives him a little parrot hat to go along with it. <laughs> a little Sultan hat to go along with him. Right. And it's just, while well, he does his one song, which is a reprise of Prince Ali, yeah, is not as great a song as either Poor Unfortunate Souls or uh, Be Prepared. Yeah, but it's so good. It's still, you could you could just hear... He's having so much fun. Oh, yes. And that, especially when he launches the rocket slash turret. <laughs> yeah. That, and that is just so much fun. So and of long, course, see ya! <laughs> and of course, how can you not love the contempt in his voice when he says, I think it's time to say goodbye to Prince Abubu. <laughs> I love that. That is so good. Like, uh, Freeman just kills it. And kills plus, it as a character. And plus, you do have a villain. I'm sure there are other villains who do the, do, have done this, especially in the Disney canon. Yes. But he literally uses sorcery to hypnotize the Sultan to get what he yes. wants. Yes. <laughs> and that's like, I appreciate the, the actual use of dark magic yeah. to get what you're doing. Because even Maleficent, the... Arguably the best villain of Disney canon, or at least right. the most evil, evil villain in the Disney canon, yeah. does not s- hypnotize her, her people. She just makes them all go to sleep. But yeah, <laughs> she's not making them do the evil deed. Yeah, so he's, he's a very wicked man. He's a very, very wicked, wicked man. And what's interesting about his design, at least from my perspective, oh, yeah. He does use have the same snake motif when he's in the full robes, like you know, his uh, staff and the snake form he has later on. Right. And it's still very much that cobra. Oh yeah, it's more of a cobra than I would say uh, one of the other. It's maybe an asp. I don't know. Yeah, 
but that sort of hooded viper Mm -hmm. uh, type snake. He's got that kind of motif going on. But the minute he's in the old beggar form Mm -hmm. there in the from the dungeon to where he uh, knocks Aladdin back in there, you can still tell it's Jafar even though he looks completely different, but only because you've been keeping up with what Jafar's doing. Yeah. And the little quick Iago showing his face for five seconds, which makes, so makes me wonder what's Iago doing (laughs) right now in that particular spot? Why is he not somewhere else taking care of business? Why is he still hanging out with Jafar while he's an old beggar? Uh, (laughs) Well, he's Jafar's hump. (laughs) I don't care. (laughs) But anyway, right. I'm sorry, a hump could have come from somewhere else. Right. But his performance is just, you can just tell he's having a ton of fun. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Back there uh, doing that. And I, like I said, I enjoy a good villain. And this is the type of, and especially a good chewing up the scenery oh, villain. Oh, yeah. Chewing the scenery so much, you're surprised you don't see bite marks out of the walls. <laughs> That's how much he's chewing the scenery. And right. it's still wonderful oh absolutely So yeah that's my feelings on his jafar and that was my number two okay what's your number two all right so to kind of uh rebound kind of go into go off yours go off of your number two your number two two thank you your number two the the fact that like when you mentioned uh jafar be like he only has this one song Mm -hmm. well apparently your production because the 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 writers and directors really wanted to give Frank uh, Free Freeman, Jonathan Freeman, Jonathan Freeman, Freeman more songs because he has a very good voice, mm-hmm. but they can only give him one song. But uh, I, I I love it that because you can because if you go back and watch the deleted scenes, there are so many of him be like of uh, Jafar eating up more scenery, yes, and having more songs which mm-hmm. are fun. And the the song be like I'll, I'll go into that in a minute, but um, like you said, he chews it up, and it's just be like every scene of his is just mm-hmm. golden. Oh yes. So my number two, the songs. You just t- took my number three. Kabam! It happens. <laughs> it does. Uh, the songs are so memorable. Mm-hmm. The songs are so memorable from. Uh, uh, never had a friend like me. Yes. Uh, a whole new world. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prince Ali. Um, Why is he Ali Abab? Wow. Uh, I will just say that the, the, the genie, both of genie songs. Yeah. He is doing wonderfully, especially jump how he jumps between characters and all in uh, Prince Ali. Uh huh. That's just so. I just love that part of it. Yeah. And the. And one of the facts, like you have, uh, I mentioned Howard, Howard Ashman before. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was his last project he ever was able to work on before he passed away from AIDS. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, there, there was one point where uh, the uh, the the um, the singing actress for uh, um, Jasmine? Jasmine, thank you, because they were in the middle of recording that, and at that point, Ashman couldn't talk. Mm-hmm. He couldn't talk at all. So he was literally, he was in his, his place in New York and they were in California. And so, or it was something where they were still, they were still there in New York because they moved all the production to New York to be closer to Ashman. Mm -hmm. So they're in the middle of it. And so, um, one of the guys is on the phone with Howard and he's be like, he's trying to talk. So everybody's got to get quiet. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, it's so, uh, and so be like, yeah, well, like, what is it? It's like, uh, be like, be more Sinatra, not, not Sinatra, but um, be more Bette Midler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and so is these little things. The guy was a freaking genius when it comes to lyrically. Because I can't remember, there's like three songs, like two or three songs in the movie that still have, um, have Howard's imprint on it. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Because it's... Because, the the songs that we know as children primarily come from that duo. Yeah, and uh, it's it's really it's really fun to actually hear one of his, like his last works he ever did on Lad, and it just made the movie even better. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it's obviously be like whole new world. You have Jafar song, which is just amazingly funny. <laughs> just, mm-hmm. It just be like even though we didn't get it. No, he didn't get it, but. Um, but be like all the songs movie are fun. They're entertaining. They, 
they tell a story. Mm-hmm. They tell a story in a way like most like most good songs when you tell you tell you a story, tell you what's going on. Um, but it's be you know, like the they're just so good and be like you. Uh, I remember as a kid, we'd be driving somewhere because I have two younger brothers, mm-hmm. and for road trips it was okay. The stair the the t- the the car radio is on. Be like, obviously you got, you know, all kinds of music playing, but mm-hmm. primarily we wind up pl- singing Disney songs and primarily Aladdin, all those other songs. So those songs are so embedded in my, my, my subconscious and my, those, those moments I'll cherish forever mm-hmm. are there. And I just be, I love the soundtrack. It's so good. So yeah, it's my number two is, uh, the songs. All right. That's also my number three. Okay. Uh, you've got Arabian Nights. Mm-hmm. You've got... I, I always call the song One Jump. That's not the name of it. Um, it's, it's Aladdin's song as he's jumping as he's yeah. in the streets. I can't remember the actual name of the song. Yeah. But I always think of it as One Jump because that's the first line of the song. Yeah. Um, you've got Friend Like Me, mm-hmm. Prince Ali, mm-hmm. uh, Whole New World... Prince Ali reprise, and that's it. Yeah. That's all the songs in this movie, and yet I can't tell you a one of them that isn't memorable in its own right. Maybe Arabian Nights might be the weakest of them, but it's only meant as an introduction. Right. And even then, it's just, that's so... And and like I said, that song was always cut out of the versions I watched previous. Right. But... It's still such a all the music is so is all singable. Mm-hmm. It all has good uh, lyrics, and you get try to if you try when you try to sing along with Robin Williams, some of his stuff. I, I'm convinced he was improving along with writing the lyrics to right. some degree, or he would had a hand must have had a hand in writing the lyrics because some of that you it feels like it has hit Robin Williams a stamp in 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 what he says. Oh yeah, and it works beautifully, mm-hmm. but. Um, it's all fun music. It's fun. It's stuff that you would love to sing along to in the mm-hmm. car. Um, and I had a hard time not singing while I was watching the movie. Oh, yeah. Because it's the music is that good, and even yeah. the score, score with the musical, I kind of don't pay as much attention to because yeah. the music is tends to be forefront in my mind. The songs do, mm-hmm. but even the score in this is so beautifully done that. You, you you get lost in it in many ways. You do, so yeah, that's why it's my number three. Okay, I What's, do I do want to make one correction. I I did uh, make an error. Uh, the the it's okay, I made an error earlier. Okay, the uh, when I talked about um, Ashman giving direction of what song, like what song lyrics, like what singer to be like, mm-hmm. it was Barbara Streisand. Ah, be like more Streisand. Hmm. So yeah. Anyway. So, What's your number three? Number three would be the story. Mm-hmm. The story is is very well told. It's got a very good pace. Um, be like one. Be like you have very relatable care. Not we have relatable characters, and you have there again like Jafar, the the very classical must mustache twirly power hungry villain, mm-hmm. and you know the the comical characters and the the uh, the love interest. And it's just be like it's such a good story. Mm-hmm. Be like from beginning to end. Be like, it's again. There's a little hiccups here and there, but they're more nitpicks than anything. Yes. But the story is so solidly well done, and I I just applaud all the writers and the the um, the performers and the animators who did that, who made such a I wouldn't say a flawless film because we're never going to get a, a flawless film or perfect film. Mm-hmm. But this comes darn close. Yeah. So yeah, story wise, amazing. All and right. you can go on and on, but yeah, such an amazing story. So moving into our dislikes. Yes. I have two nitpicks and a hot take. Okay. I'm gonna take save the hot take until last. All right. Because you're it's probably I'm probably gonna piss a lot of people off when I say it. Okay. <laughs> so my first nitpick, the CG did not age as well as I would have liked. I would agree with you on that. I am mainly referring to uh, when he's, they're in the frozen, when the cave uh, wonders. No, 
that one was all kind of, that, there's some trouble there too but the yeah. one that sticks out okay. to me the most is when Aladdin and uh, Abu are in the frozen wasteland and you've got that big CG turret yeah rolling towards them mm-hmm. that I don't I don't know what it is but you, that almost seems like it's too simple in a way okay. too simple a model if that makes sense I mean in my mind, that turret is a part of the building. It's part right. of the palace. You do not build a tower that size and there not be anything in it. Right? That is true. And yet, when instead the the angle that we see as it's rolling down when it does that big zoom out, you can see at least all the way up to the one window. Yeah, there's nothing in there. And there's it. nothing in there. Yeah. Now I know that's probably a lot to ask for early '90s CG to actually right. have a lot of stuff in there, but you could at least have, uh, I don't know, a floor, maybe about, I don't know, ten feet into whatever room that it broke off at. Right. Maybe see what the remains of a ladder go up in there. I'm not asking for much. I'm asking for maybe ten uh, polygons. Yeah, of stuff. Just enough to give you, it's like, okay, yeah, it's not empty. We're not going to show you what's in there for obvious reasons, but it's we're not going to leave it empty. And they leave it empty, and I don't know why they left it yeah. empty. And Good plus, point. the walls that we do see, mm-hmm. they seem incredibly thin for a semi. I don't. It's not. I know it's not actually Adobe, but it's that still mud. Yeah. Type mud of brick. Uh, it's mud brick. Yeah. That's that type of construction. Those walls seem awfully thin. At the base, for the size, of, and that's so that bit of the CG, and that that part of the CG does feel rush. A, a lot of what you were saying about the Cave of Wonders, yeah. especially in the chase, yeah, the the CG is not aging well there either. No, it's not. I'm not, and I'm I'm not a hundred percent certain in that. Uh, that might not be a um, product of the remaster. That could to be some degree because. Well, I know they had caps, and I know that I think this might have been after the way they did it in uh, Great Mouse Detective, where they literally right. had all the scenes plotted. I think this might have been at a point where they were actually rendering it on a compu- in the computer. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure because I know it's that computer aided uh, system that Caps is, and they may have had it. Level uh, layered it that way. I don't really know, okay. but I don't think it aged well the way it's done. Okay, not like some of the other stuff we have seen from previous, um, and not that we're reviewing Beauty and the Beast right this minute. No, I do think that ballroom scene has the same problem. Yeah, in a way. Not that I've seen the movie in a while, but I have seen a commercial of it recently. Yeah, and that that part of it stood out to me. That oh yeah, that's obviously CG. Yeah. <laughs> But um, well, that or that's beside the point. It's it's that early it's that early '90s Disney CG that's it gets better in Lion King. Yes, because Lion King you don't quite you don't have this problem. There's a couple things you can go, okay, yeah, that's CG, but yet it still works better. Yeah, I don't know a better way to put it than that. Yeah. yeah, it's I mean it was it was good for its time, mm-hmm. but and and I'll admit part of why it's it's standing out to me now based yeah. on what I remember from when I watched it. I watched it originally on a 480 standard definition tube television. Right. Almost every single one of those artifacts would have been covered up by the low resolution. This time I watched it on a 1080p television with that had been remastered with, with remastered footage. It's going to stand out a little bit, a little bit. So yeah, it, it, I just kind of wish it was a better than that. Yeah. I just, anyway, like I said, this really is a nitpick because yeah. it still works beautifully. Well, I think when they when Disney started remastering their their movies, mm-hmm. the the first movie they remastered was actually Snow White from Cinderella. Yeah, and which is pre caps by a long shot. Yeah, it's it's so pre caps. But when they, when they go when they when they went to go remaster the film, because originally Snow White's Snow White Cinderella's dress. Was white mm-hmm. in the original in the in the 
I think it was yeah, the yeah, DVD or the Blu-ray. They, it was blue. They recolored it to be slightly bluer, and you lose many of the sparkles. Yeah, exactly. That are around the dress because of that. Yeah, exactly. So I remember seeing that also. Yeah. So I think Disney learned their lesson because if they, because they yeah. could they could have gone in and completely re like reworked all those shots and with with more modern technology to make it right better, but. It's it's yeah, I, it's always I, better to you know I'm not complaining reserve, that, reserve that I'm not complaining that the remaster didn't do enough I don't want the remasters to really mess with some no. stuff they really don't have to George Lucas <laughs> at some point on the other show we need to go through those movies yeah but we will. that's beside the point we will we'll get there when we get there but um, I'm just saying that the, what the original animators did and I admittedly they were still learning 3D. Right. At the time, what you can do with 3D, what you really shouldn't do with 3D. And this is just one of those things, the way these couple of scenes are done, where it's like, I wish it had been done differently. Right. Originally. And the only reason I'm noticing it now is because it's remastered. Gotcha. Anyway, what's your number one dislike? My number one dislike... Um, now, Grant, this is more of a nitpick. Mm -hmm. The uh, Aladdin's Second Wish... Okay. Because technically it wasn't Aladdin's wish. Aladdin didn't ask Genie to do that. Be like, yes, be like, yes, he nodded his head, but he was unconscious. Yes. And for the fact to be like, be like, you have to ask for it. And Genie did it for simply be like, I've got to save Al's life and I can't bail you out this time. And so he literally went with, it's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, be like, I'm going to kind of force the situation where I have, where you have to use your wish. So technically, if you were to go, if you were to go by the, go by a rule of, be like, you have to say it. Mm -hmm. Technically, he had one wish, one wish, one wish left. But that there again, that is more of a nitpick towards the. Uh, so, not to disagree with you because okay. that it is a weird moment. Yes. In there, but I kind of rationalized that away with the fact that technically, yeah, even though he got Genie to make that fur the escape on his own, on his own, yeah, the fact that Genie then acts to save him, I think, kind of evens it back out because he uses a wish. Obviously, Aladdin would wish if he was physically able yes, to. Yes, agreed. But he kind of does that really more as the freebie while giving, well, he, he essentially moved his wish currency around is what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay. In, in my way of thinking, because like, sure, he gave out, he gave, it looks like he's given, he's given Aladdin two free wishes. Yeah. But he really didn't because he technically used one to save him. Well, technically he should have used one to get them out of the cave of wonders yeah. in the first place. So, yeah, there. That technically would have been the third overall wish. Yeah, I don't. And it. Yeah, I agree with you to some degree. I wish that had been handled differently. Mm -hmm. There's another weird thing though they should have done. Yeah. Before Aladdin wishes genie free. Yeah. They could have give the the lamp to Princess Jasmine, and she could have wished him to be a prince. Could have, but then that would almost defeat the purpose. I know, and it kind of isn't what she wanted in the first place. No, she wanted to marry who she wanted to marry, and really didn't care that he was if that he wasn't a prince. And actually, was kind of happy he wasn't a prince. But yeah, she wouldn't marry for long. They could have at any point if she'd have gotten hold of the lamp, she technically would have been master of the lamp, and she had three wishes she can do. Right. So anyway, that's just a weird thing. I got you. All right. So, you don't want to give it to the Sultan because he's too easily hypnotized. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and yeah, I'll get into that in number three. But <laughs> what is your number two? My number two is it's my second nitpick. Genie's not in this film as much as I remembered him being. Right. So I was curious when I was watching the movie when I when Aladdin finally rubs the lamp for the first time. Mm -hmm. and Genie comes out. I paused the movie and looked at the time. We were 30 minutes into it's 30, you're 30 minutes into the movie when Genie first shows up. Right. When he gets taken by when, when Jafar steals the lamp and he's putting the the palace up on top of the hill. 
Yeah. We are at an hour into the movie, meaning there's only 30 minutes left. Right. Which means while Genie does some stuff, is still doing some of his Genie stuff while Jafar technically has control of the lamp. Right. None of that stuff is as fun. Well, there's a couple things, but most of it's not as fun. And most of it is in the middle of that climax. Everything I remember of the genie in my memory is mm-hmm. in that middle 30 minutes. And it's not as much as I thought it was. Okay. So like I said, this is a nitpick. It's just I kind of wish there was more genie to go around. I wish they had... So yeah, there there was that the- at a fan theory that went along a, 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 a couple years ago that Disney actually said, yes, that is what's happening. Mm. That the peddler at the beginning yeah. of the movie being voiced by Robin Williams, Mm -hmm. is actually the genie in disguise from the end of the movie. Yeah. But they don't do anything in... But the scene that would have revealed that to us, the audience, got cut. Yeah. Now, when they did the live-action version, they went ahead and kind of did that, that they originally intended to do. Okay. But... I wish we'd gotten more Robin Williams, is I guess what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Maybe... As much as I don't really like narrators a lot, maybe have him say some stuff between scenes, continuing to do that, you know, Arabian horse trader, try to get you to buy the lamp now sort of thing. Yeah. So you can, maybe cutting back and forth to make him trying to sell the lamp may have been may have been something just to give the Robin Williams more because Robin Williams is a lot of the soul of this movie. Right. And I want more of him, but he's only really in full Robin Williams mode about 30 minutes of the movie. Roughly, yeah. Because once Jafar gets a hold of the lamp, while he does have a lot of good other scenes, uh, and he does have some funny one-liners here and there, my favorite being Jafar, Jafar, he's our man. If he can't do it, great! (laughs) But um, you do get a couple of fun things in there, but it's not, it's more reserved at that point because the genie can't show that he's trying really to help. He's more on this other side. He's got to still be at Jafar's beck and call. Right. But he's, so he can't really be full Robin Williams. And that's what I, like I said, it's a nitpick. I just wish there was more, more of him in the movie. Yeah. Is what it comes down to. So yeah, that's my number two. Okay. What is your number two? So my number two, uh, touches on the carpet. Mm-hmm. The rug, uh, everyone's favorite, fly, you know, flying garbage. Yes, and it's not really due with him, but it's the the rules of the cable wonders mm-hmm. of how you know the cable wonders says to Aladdin, be like, you know, touch nothing but the lamp. Yeah, it's like okay, then the carpet should be off limits. The carpet, should all have... the gold in that one room that is they're walking over should be off. Yeah, us. exactly. And they, they obviously they walk over some piles of gold yes. and because the rule says, was not don't take anything, but the lamp. Yeah, it was don't touch anything, but the lamp. And so with that, it's like, okay, one, they touch the lamp Two, they're talking, they're, they're touching the floor itself of the, the cable wonders. Mm-hmm. So I, the well, nitpick I, was, I, I they, will let the cave part, Touching the floor of the cave, I'll let that go because... Yeah, you, you kind of have to walk. Yeah, you kind of have to walk. The gold in the one thing that is literally on the floor that you can't not step on... Right. That's a little bit more distressing. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree with you. Now, I, the carpet is almost like a... Uh, almost like a data ex machina in a way. Mm-hmm. That it's be like... It's always there to help Aladdin in those really tough situations. They'll yeah. help him get out of the situation. Mm-hmm. Because obviously he couldn't get out of the situation by himself. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, yeah, obviously you have to introduce the carpet. But how do you introduce the carpet without breaking rules? And I guess that was the only rule they had to break. In a way. Um, my rationalization. Okay. Yes, the rule was touch nothing but the lamp. Yes. What if... Anytime you are talking about these kind of treasure areas. Yeah. The people who design these things in fiction always love a good puzzle and how they design these things. Right. That's why 
Indiana Jones has so many of these things they have to get through in order right. to you know not get killed while they try to get the treasure at the end. That's essentially what's going on here is we've got an Indiana Jones moment with Aladdin mm. happening. So it makes sense that perhaps in a more mystical magic type of puzzle type of tomb or cave as this is right it makes sense that they would provide a way to get across if you could find it which would be the carpet right maybe putting it in the room with all the gold is not the best way to get its attention since they had to step on so much gold to get to it exactly (laughs) which is really where i i still have issues with that but um i don't know it's i can see that as being here's how they would the the people who were supposed to be able to get through this. Right. That's how they would have gotten there. This is how they would expect the diamond in the rough to be able to find it yeah. his way, the way to resist temptation. Through it. To resist temptation is to take the magic carpet. And I'm fairly certain that the magic carpet is in the original story, even though I've not read the original story. Right. Which is why, and it was probably how he got across everything there. Possibly. Because I don't know if Abu is in the original. I don't. I don't remember. I've but heard some of it. I, but I can also see, you know, no one's perfect. He got the lamp, but as he's walking out, he's like, he sees this big gem. So, ooh, I kind of want that too. And he touches it. And then the Cave of Wonders or whatever it's called in the yeah. book goes crazy. But, yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, that's but my rationalization. Know, Take yeah. that for what it's worth. And now, granted, that's just more of a nitpick. Be like, they, they mm-hmm. could have obviously maybe reworded the Cave of Wonders dialogue maybe a little different. Or had be like, oh, here's your assistant, but that wouldn't make any sense. Right. So it's it's be like, let's introduce the character in a very unique way, but at the same time, you're breaking your rule in a way. Mm-hmm. But there again, c- the carpet is Deus Machina. Yes. In a way. So yeah, that that is my number two. What is your number three? My number three is a hot take, okay. which means I'm going to have a lot of people mad at me probably after okay. I say this. I think the writing is actually better in the live action remake than it is this one. Oh my gosh. See, yeah. it's not so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then let me, now before y'all just shut the thing off and curse <laughs> my name and <laughs> all this stuff, let me explain. Okay. This movie, you've got a, you've, at this time in Disney's hist- history, right. they had a, hard cut off at an hour and a half. You could not go over an hour and a half right. in one of these films. Whether that is a money thing, a a thing where maybe they don't think kids will be able to pay attention after an hour and a half. Right. I don't know. I don't know the exact reasoning why, but you have that. And so there's not enough time in this movie, I feel, to get into many of these characters' backstories. Okay. The Bollywood style version of Aladdin that we got last year, okay, actually goes more. I think it was last year, but it goes into more depth. Okay, on nearly every single character, even uh, I think Alan Menken even wrote a whole new song for Jasmine, dealing with you okay know, being while being a royal and being the the future queen right. is still at the slavery of a man, right? That sort of thing. And while I know that some people who are political might scoff at such things, it worked better for her character. Right. Now, before I get a lot of people yelling at me that I somehow think Will Smith's version of Friend Like Me or <laughs> Prince Ali was better. No, 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 no. I prefer Robin Williams. I actually think the music was done better in the original. Yeah. But the overall story. Yeah. I think was done better in the remake than it was in this version. That is not this movie's fault. No. Do not get me wrong. Like you said, it was the limitations. It was the limitation of the time. It's just, I knew when I finished, I thought, I have to say that the remake was better in this instance. Mm. And it's just because the writing is more fleshed out in a way where I actually believe these characters are doing what... even as much as I love the the mush, mustache twirling Jafar in right. this, in some ways, the mustache twirling is somehow even more realistic in a way that I is believable in the remake than in this one. And I hate to say that because I know it's like people are going to hate me over this. Okay. I'm going to get raked over the coals, I know, when this comes out. And so <laughs> I'm asking your forgiveness now, people. I have an unpopular opinion. 
make like Elsa and let it go. <laughs> I just, I think I, while I prefer the original music and a lot of, and the, the animation style of the original version, I think the story was better in the remake. And in many ways, I wish you could have some weird amalgamation of the two where you had the old art and the old music and the old voice actors, but with the writing of the new, the newer movie. Okay. That's just my thoughts on that. So. I gotcha. So I, I think the cell, the cell nation will forgive you for that. Uh, I think so. Just the, the, I mean, I, I understand, I understand be like, you have what they did with beauty and the beast. Mm-hmm. Beauty, they, they actually like what they did with beauty. And the beast. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed what they did with beauty and the beast. The, the fact that they expanded the story out, they were, they had more liberty to do mm-hmm. that. Um, and myself, I haven't seen Aladdin yet. But uh, the the live action movie, I haven't seen I, it yet. I'm going to suggest it. Okay, that's what I keep hearing. People should be like, go there, watch it. It's amazing. There, and others say no, it's terrible. As, as much as I prefer the Robin Williams portrayal of genie too. Yeah, Will Smith's genie is an entirely different character from Robin right. Williams' genie. Of course, he's got an entire different point. Heck, they see Robin. They see Will Smith's character for far longer. The the real people do. Yeah, than they do in that because then. And there's actually give Genie a bit more story. Okay. Which I think works better. I just, and I think some of that is based on the musical version that was on Broadway. If yeah. I'm mistaken. Most likely, yes. But it still worked, I think, very well. And I kind I just, like I said, I kind of want a weird marriage of both. But that's just me. I actually do still like this movie. Do not get me wrong. Right. It's just if you had, you know. Put a gun to my head. Ask which story is better between the original Aladdin and the remake. I have to say the remake. Okay. But anyway. All right. What's your third dislike? My third dislike. Besides me at the moment. <laughs> hey, I, I have nothing. I have nothing against your argument. Be like, there again, I have not seen the film yet, so I really can't say anything about it. All right. So my third is really like a really history nerd nitpick about this film for a fictional story for a fix mythology exactly okay so this this is this is this is the 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 history nerd in me said well okay that be like under not understanding fully the culture itself because obviously this is arabia this is more of Mm -hmm. the muslim world uh and understanding having a understanding more of what the culture was like Mm -hmm. there there are a lot of elements in the movie that they do right be like you know the you know the the arm cut the hands cutting off because mm-hmm. the thieves and that kind of stuff, uh, but there's a lot of it, and I understand why they did it. I understand why they did what they did with the film because because obviously Princess Jasmine has to be your 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 strong princess character, mm-hmm. and uh, your your Sultan has to be this you know bobbling fool who's you know a love a lovable you know mm-hmm. goofball that just gets himself in a lot more trouble than he should. But historically, if he, if he did more of a historical, uh, more of a historical piece, be like, this would be a lot of people wouldn't like it. <laughs> Let's say that <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't like it. The, the fact that princess Jasmine wouldn't have a choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, there'd be a lot more siblings around. Yeah. Uh, because you know, back then, back then and obviously historically that uh sultans did have many wives and many concubines concubines mm-hmm. the the fact that that he would have be like obviously you if he would want sons and be like be like at that age be like most likely he would have probably got knocked out by one of his sons with more power yeah. and one of the cup co- co- one of the podcasts i listen to is it's uh history it's uh what is this um I have to get back to that, but it's it's a uh, it's a history based podcast, and they're doing one of the alt- um, Ottoman Empire, mm-hmm. and uh, well, it's really fascinating. Be like how the uh, di- the dynastic uh, rule is so be like if you make one mistake, be like everyone's gonna jump on you about it. Yeah, uh, and I'm just talking about just be like be like oh you did bad. I mean, it's like no, we're gonna take your head, mm-hmm. and be like it's like if you have any kind of rivals, it was literally just be like everybody's gone. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I find that I find that very fascinating from a historical standpoint. But I understand why they went this route, mm-hmm. and the the fact to be like the Sultan is not married didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> I was like, what? 
This guy should have so many wives and concubines. I just which I, I disagree with. I disagree with concubines. I, I just figured I they were off, wives. I just figured they were off screen. Yeah, that's true, but it's also implied that he's not married. Well, his, his he last, only has one child. His the mother of Jasmine may have passed. Yeah, well, that's 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 a Disney that's a Disney uh, that's a standard Disney rule. Yeah, it's a tradition. A parent must be dead or die in the movie. I was actually just thinking. Wreck It Ralph. As far as I know, we never saw his creator die, so we don't know if he's no. alive or not. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that be like. I'm that, sorry. That was just a weird thought. Wreck, that Wreck, my it, mind. Wreck It Ralph is that very weird one because it has more Pixar influence to it. Yeah. So no, granted, but but, um, but but in the same sense, be like I understand where they're coming from. Uh, for, but from the history nerd in me, it was like be like you should have put a little more of this in here be like yes you're you're you get well, a, you get a lot of aspects here and there right yeah but at the same time it's like eh. that stuff i don't really doesn't mess with me as much because I, that's like the disney cleansing for lack of a better term right that has affected all of the classic fairy tales oh, yeah absolutely that disney has produced yeah the thing but if on the same train of thought of historical realism right Let's say, let's just say. Yeah, hypothetically. Hypothetically. They're on that carpet. Yeah. Where do they go? How many countries do we see during a whole new world? A we lot. see. Oh, that reminds me of something. We see Greece, mm -hmm. which means we should be seeing Hercules but around yeah. this time. Yeah. We see uh, China, which means Mulan should be hanging around. Right. Plus. Egypt. Uh, Egypt. They've not done an Egypt movie yet. No, they haven't. Give it time. Uh, <laughs> just claim that Moses should be over there by now at this yeah. point. It's about right. Uh, there's a couple other... Right. There's a, a, many. They go to many other different places. Right. Do you know how fast they would have to travel to do all of that and oh, make yeah, it back insane. to Agrabah? In one night? <laughs> oh, it's insane. They are dead. Oh, yeah. The planes now can't make that kind of journey that fast. Uh, apparently, and they are has... exposed to the wind. And it's like, you know what? I understand what's going on, and I'm assuming there's a little bit of genie magic going on, even though we don't see him. Yeah. But <laughs> it's like, I... you're in China. Right. Probably in the capital, imperial capital city, which yeah. means you're not just in China, you're on the other side of China. <laughs> you are as far away from Agrabah as you are, as Agrabah is from North America. <laughs> Pretty much. And you made it there in one night with enough time to go to Greece and Egypt and come back. <laughs> All right. So two points. Um, and it's still be nightfall when you get back. Yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Well, apparently a carpet has warp drive. Apparently, <laughs> and uh, in doing a little and doing a little research on this, uh, the whole new world scene. Apparently, when they're in Greece, because there's an Apple theme going on in the film. Okay. Okay. So I don't notice an Apple thing. Other than at, unless you're referring to Apple computers. No, the the fact would be like, okay, what is what is the first thing that Aladdin gives Jasmine? Is an, an apple. apple. Yeah. Okay. And then in the whole new world, he gives her an apple. Where are they? They're in Greece. Okay. Okay. So I'm not in, following. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm getting there. So in in Greek culture, in Greek culture, if you pass an apple to a, a girl you like, be like that is to, to cultural. That means be like that is an engagement. Okay. But <laughs> okay, what's your but? But <laughs> okay, neither Aladdin or Jasmine are Greeks, are Greek, and they don't know the local customs. They are just happen to pass an apple tree, and Aladdin that is true. To be the I, one who I, I just thought that was so interesting. It. I was like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> that may be interesting symbolism, but it falls apart. <laughs> I, I agree because it doesn't really fall within their their culture. Yes. Anyway, either way. Uh, let's move into our ratings for right. this movie. I actually give it an eight. You give it an eight. Okay. Go it's ahead. a fun movie. Mm -hmm. It still rings true in my memories. It's, like I said, it's probably the most adventurous movie of this era. Yeah. I would even claim it's the only movie that gets close to it, not be tangled. Okay. In terms of adventurous 
Disney Princess movie. Right. Even though I don't really consider this a Disney Princess movie. Okay. There's a lot of people fight you on that. I don't, well, the reason I don't consider it that is that unlike a Disney Princess movie in which the princess is the main character. I agree with you on that. This is more of a Disney Prince movie. It's the yeah. only Disney Prince movie. That is... Yeah, that's that's one that's one of the things they kind of struggle with when you do in this film. But it's not a Disney princess movie. No, it's not. It's the guy trying to get the girl, not the girl trying to get, get the, the guy. guy. Right. But that's just me. That's just me going saying, and it's not really a princess movie because this is more for the guys than it is for the girls. But yeah. I would concede to a Disney prince movie, and I have nothing wrong with Jasmine being considered a Disney princess. Right. But yeah, I still give this an eight because it's just a fun movie. It's not the one that holds the most nostalgia for me from a childhood. Okay. That honor goes to Lion King. Of course. <laughs> but uh, this is still a great and fun movie. So Agreed. yeah, eight. All right. your, what are you scoring it? I'm going to give it a nine. Okay. Uh, unlike unlike you, be like you don't ever really have that that childhood now. Schnauzers. Nostalgia? Uh, the snow the snow I'm gonna say schnauzer for some reason. <laughs> Nostalgia. Thank you. Nostalgia about this film because it is it, it has integrated itself so well into my my uh my, my young life into my adult life mm -hmm. that it's such uh like you find yourself quoting it so often or just be like when someone says something be like, Oh yeah, that reminds me of this. Because mm -hmm. it's so ingrained in there, and uh, the the fact that it's such a well told story, the 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 cast is so good of Jafar and mm -hmm. Genie, and uh, the I, I love the story. I love the animation, um, like the fact to be like some of the the powerhouses of the the Renaissance, the the Disney Renaissance mm -hmm. worked on this film. Yeah. And uh, I just be like, oh my gosh, I love this. And uh, if you know, if I had the chance, had the money to be like, hey, can you draw me something, please? Mm -hmm. It'd be like it would be from these guys who did this film. Maybe not the characters from this film, but yeah. you know, the the other characters they have drawn. So to to me, it's it's always going to have a like a very uh, uh, a special place in okay. my heart for this film. So it's it's definitely a nine. All righty. That brings us to the end of this episode, which means we need to roll for our next movie. All right. Now, at the end of the last episode, I said that we might be getting close to having to re-roll our, our spots. Right. Uh, I did the calculations a little bit further on it and realized Aladdin was actually 39. Okay. So it's the next, at the end of the next episode, we need to roll that D20. Okay. To find out where uh, all our movies sit from now on. Okay. So... We also had Aladdin technically taking up four spots, and while we didn't roll it, we decided to go ahead and let the genie out of the bottle. Yeah. And go ahead and get it out of the way. So we actually have four movies to put on the list this week. So in the slot number one, which was me, I decided to put in a movie that's a bit more of an experimentation. It's a different kind of film than any other film we've done because it's not really a movie. Okay. It is Disney's third animated feature, Fantasia. Ah. I thought this would just be a fun, interesting thing. Let us be a little artistically yeah. minded about this. Yeah. Talk about how great, you know, I figured we had to have one of those where it's like, here's how we can prove we're very critical thinkers. Okay. <laughs> and this, and if there's going to be a movie that's going to prove that when it comes to animation, it's probably going to be this one. Oh, so. Okay. Uh, and plus Fantasia has been on my mind recently. So uh -huh. that's why I went and put Fantasia on the list. So what are you putting at uh, number two? My number two would be the iron giant. That's a good choice. Yes. One of Brad Burr's very first animated movies. Mm -hmm. Uh, what have you got at number three? The classic Pixar toy story. I agree with that one as well. That's going to mm -hmm. be a good one. I actually thought of you doing that. So I'm glad you got it on there. Okay. And my number four would be a, it's a different type of animation. It would be our second stop motion film. Yeah. Cause it, I don't think Wallace and Gromit counts. Maybe. Cause I think it was done in CG. That could be that possible. Was, uh, Curse of the Were-Rabbit is what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
Uh, but the movie I'm referring to is Kubo and the Two Strings. All right. So sitting at number five on that dice roll, which has been on the list for four episodes, is Dragon Ball Z, The Dead Zone. Oh, that's going to be interesting. And then sitting at number six on there for five episodes, we have Monsters vs. Aliens. Hmm. So Aladdin was your pick. Yes. Which means I get to roll. And I rolled a two, which means we are doing the Iron, Iron Giant. Giant. So join us next week for this classic, classic, amazing film. Mm-hmm. Movie I have not seen yet, but I'm looking so much to watch. Because I didn't I've, realize I've, you hadn't seen no, it No, I haven't. Mm-hmm. It's a classic. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised you got it on the list before me, but it is a good movie. Yeah, for some, for some reason we never watched it as kids, so. Well, I only caught it on Cartoon Network. Like when I was in high school. Okay. So, and I enjoyed it. So I I saw Incredibles before this. Oh, wow. Okay. Give you an idea. Okay. So, yeah. So join us next week for that. All right. Come, Jacob. We must prepare for next week. Prepare for what, Drew? Same thing we do every week, Jacob. Record a podcast. Oh, boy. So where can they find you, Jacob? They can find me on Facebook at Jacob B. Heron and Jacob's Daily Art Corner, my personal art Facebook page, on Twitter at Jacob B. Heron, on Instagram at Jacob B. Heron, and on Letterbox at Jacob Heron. Where can they find you, Drew? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. You can also find my Facebook page at Drew's Photo Bin, where I upload uh, my photography. You can also follow me on Letterbox at GGeorge759 and Twitter at GGeorge759. Where can they find us, Jacob? You can also visit our website, thecellcast.podbean.com, where you will find every episode we released and links to listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Stitcher. Our RSS feed, if we aren't in your favorite podcast app directory, please share, review, and subscribe to us there and share us with your friends. You will also find a link to our Facebook group, the Double Feature Podcast Community, where we talk about both animated and live action movies. We share this with our other podcasts, which we do with Jacob's brother Jim at uh, the Movie of the Week podcast where we talk about live action movies. You can also email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. Also, please like our page on Facebook. We try to post about upcoming movies. If you comment on that movie's post before we record, we'll read your comments in the episode. And remember, every time we say The Cellcast, that is with a single L. L.